स्टूडेंट्स यू नो दैट दीज डेज वी आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट कॉन्टेक्ट रेजिस्टेंस एंड इट्स मेजरमेंट टेक्निक द टेक्निक विच वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस टूडे इज कॉल्ड ट्रांसफर लेंथ मेथड इन शॉर्ट इट इज कॉल्ड टी एल एम नाउ इन दिस टेक्निक वी स्टार्ट विद दिस काइंड ऑफ स्ट्रक्चर यू कैन सी हियर दिस इज ए रिक्टेंगुलर चैनल fabricated in a opposite type of semiconductor for example if this channel is n type it should be fabricated in a p type substrate now within this channel there are multiple contacts you can see these black rectangles are metal contacts and uh, you can see that the area of all these contacts is same it means whatever contact resistance they offer that is same in case of all these contacts another interesting thing is that the gap between the contacts is different so d1 is gap between the first pair of contacts then d2 is gap between second pair of contacts and so on now w is width of this uh, uh, diffused channel and z is the width of contact uh, you can see clearly that the width of contact is intentionally made smaller than the width of channel i discussed in the previous lecture also so why we do it like this if we make z equal to w then it may happen that during the fabrication of structure and specifically during the photolithographic step if there is a slight misalignment in placing the mask here then because of that misalignment this contact may go to the p type substrate that way this channel will get shorted with the substrate and we will not be able to perform these measurements with accuracy now if we talk about uh, the resistance between the contacts so it is given by this equation rt is the total resistance which uh, is between any pair of uh, contacts now uh, this part this first part uh, the sheet resistance multiplied by d d is the gap between the contacts divided by z z is the width of the contact so this first part is the resistance total resistance between the contacts this is the resistance offered by the semiconductor and this resistance is between the two contacts and this 2 rc is the uh, component which is contributed by the uh, contact resistance so two contacts are used in uh, every measurement so that's why rc is the resistance offered by one contact plus rc uh, contact resistance offered by the second contact so that's why 2 rc part is there so this equation can be simplified further and uh, if we simplify it little bit more we will reach to this this part right so the equation will become something like this so if you want to understand how we uh, reach uh, from this uh, solution to this second solution then we have to understand these two equations so first what we will do so instead of this rc we will put this equation here rho c divided by lt into z and then value of the rho c we will uh, get from this equation so for this purpose we will square root uh, we will uh, take square both sides then lt square divided lt square multiplied by sheet resistance that will be equal to rho c we will put the value of rho c rho c here and then whatever we get that uh, value we will insert here so finally if we solve it we will reach to this particular solution. so anyway the second interesting uh, thing uh, is that this equation is almost similar to the equation of straight line so you know that equation of straight line is y is equal to mx plus c so uh, y and x they are two variables here so if we look at this equation these two variables they, instead of y we are using rt and in place of x there is d d is a variable here you can uh, see at the structure d changes and if d changes y should also change right y means rt rt should also change so if we make a plot like this so y axis is rt total resistance and on x axis there is d here then we should get straight line and you can see here the straight line is there so these uh, four different measurement data four data points are shown here one data point for first pair and second data point for the second pair third data point for the third pair and fourth data point for the fourth pair so we got rt1 between this 
first pair here like this between this pair and this pair rt2 rt2 between this uh, this pair and rt3 here and so on right so from this structure we get four points and with the help of those four points it's possible to draw this straight line <coughs> sorry <coughs> now another important thing which you have to see here is that you see here m is slope here and if we compare this uh, equation of straight line with this uh, equation of total resistance and you know that uh, d is uh, x here so this part this heat resistance divided by z that is our slope so it is shown here slope is heat resistance divided by z and uh, so if we uh, find out slope of this line that uh, we can do very easily and uh, since we know z also z is width of the contact it is possible to find out heat resistance so the one important parameter which we can get from this uh, experimental data that is sheet resistance of the semiconductor so it's very interesting because in all other methods which we have discussed so far uh, there was no provision of uh, finding the sheet resistance and in some methods even the sheet resistance value was required so in advance we should know the sheet resistance of the semiconductor but if we go for this particular technique it's not necessary to uh, to know the sheet resistance of the channel in advance Rather, this method itself gives us this possibility to find out sheet resistance. Now, the second thing, so if we look at the straight line and if we go to this particular uh, uh, intercept, so you know that uh, at this intercept, the uh, value of D is 0. So if X is 0, Y is equal to C. So if here D is 0, RT, RT is equal to 2RT because C, uh, R 2RC is equivalent to C. So it's a constant here. So this intercept will give you value of 2 rc so the second parameter which you can uh, find out with the help of this structure and this technique that is contact resistance now if you look at this third intercept intercept at uh, x axis here y is 0 means rt is 0 so if you put rt 0 here in this e equation and uh, instead of uh, this uh, solution if you uh, look at this particular solution and if you put RC, rt 0 then uh, this part will go there it will become 0 so the d uh, will be equal to 2 into lt so you can say the magnitude of d is 2 into lt so this intercept gives you value of 2 into lt so that way if you look at this intercept you can find out lt so all these three parameters you can find out with the help of this transfer length method uh, not only contact resistance but uh, you can uh, get the value of transfer length and even the sheet resistance also. so this is beauty of this technique that not only uh, one parameter but other parameters also you can find out with the help of this single uh, setup or single measurement now uh, we have seen the advantage of this technique so uh, now uh, let's discuss about limitations also. there are many limitations uh, but we are going to discuss only one part one particular type of limitation in today's lecture and that limitation is regarding the sheet resistance value so here uh, when we uh, used this equation main assumption was that the sheet resistance is same throughout this channel right but practically it is not so so the res sheet resistance between the contact and just under the contact is different right so you know why because when we fabricate this uh, metal contact at that time so sometimes we perform an healing step heating step and uh, during that heating step some changes occur in the semiconductor just below the contact even uh, there are chances that the metal which we are using there suppose aluminium metal is used so it have tendency that uh, during heating some aluminium atoms diffuses they penetrate they enter into the semiconductor and they make some modifications in the local conductivity so that way uh, the the value of sheet resistance just below the contact and between the contacts is not same and since this assumption doesn't meet so we cannot say that whatever value we are getting that is uh, 100 percent accurate but still uh, we say that uh, this method is very good because the limitation which we have discussed so far regarding the the non-uniformity of uh, the sheet resistance 
that limitation exists in all other structures also which we have discussed so far all two contact systems and three contact systems they also have metal contact and that kind of non uniformity of the acid resistance exists in those structures also so uh, in uh, conclusion we can say that uh, out of all the uh, techniques which we have discussed so far this is a very good technique which gives us multiple parameters with uh, sufficient accuracy so now uh, you know uh, various techniques for finding out contact resistance using two contact system three contact system multiple contact system and uh, i hope that now you are able to make good choice of the uh, contact resistance measurement technique which can give you a sufficient information <coughs> you know the advantages and disadvantages of various techniques also so if still you have any doubt and any question you can discuss with me during the interactive so thank you thank you very much for today